Good morning, good morning, good morning, and good afternoon to those who are in uh, Central Time Zone and the Eastern Time Zones. We uh, thank God for another opportunity to be alive and to be in God's presence on today, and happy Sabbath to all the Sabbath keepers out there today, and we praise God for another day of life. We're excited. We're excited today about the conversation we'll have, and once again, we have our our guest, uh, Milton Brown, Dr. Milton Brown, on the show. And uh, he's got some uh, interesting information to share with us under the title, Will COVID Make a Comeback? Will COVID Make a Comeback? And uh, we wish you, um, wish to extend to you greetings from Rainbow Community Praise Center in Fontana, California. And this uh, broadcast is... Uh, uh, TriCast, really, because we're on three mediums, uh, is designed to provide relevant information to inspire the nation and empower a generation. And so truly, we want to make a dent and make a difference with our programming today. If you're um, listening by uh, video, I'm sorry, if you're listening by YouTube or by Facebook or if you're on the chat, just take a moment to let us know where you're calling in from. Uh, we always do that every week to get an idea where uh, our viewers and listeners are uh, able to make contact and where they are around the country and around the globe. So while you're doing that, also feel free to take a moment and put in your prayer requests. Just um, put their prayer request, colon, and whatever it is, so that uh, during prayer time, uh, during prayer time, um, Elder Nola can be sure to drop that in and make sure we cover that, all right? Uh, let us know where you're calling in from. Drop those testimonies, too. Drop your testimonies. Drop your prayer requests. Uh, we do it all here, one-stop shopping. And uh, we believe that God answers prayers. And we've seen some uh, very powerful prayers just since we've been, uh, just since we've been uh, doing this since uh, March. We've seen the hand of God move, and so we're excited about that. Uh, let's see, we've got San Bernardino uh, calling in. We've got Beaumont calling in. We've got, uh, let's see, we're missing... Uh, Miss, where is, where is uh, Brother Kenny Anderson at? I don't see him today, but he might be on a little later. And uh, let's see. Uh, I didn't see anyone on the Facebook thread just yet. But uh, all right, so we're glad to have you. And again, put in your testimonies that you might have and any prayer requests that you might have. We are so delighted to uh, hear that the... Um, that the Aeolians, Oakwood University Aeolians, uh, that's uh, the choir, the premier choir down in, uh, in Huntsville at uh, Oakwood University is doing so well that the album, their album, The Aeolians, has been uh, up for Grammy consideration. And so we are so proud, uh, the Aeolians and director, Dr. Jason Max Ferdinand. And so the categories are Best Engineered Album Classical, uh, produced producer of the year classical and then best choral performance uh, so we're excited about that and really uh, really hoping that uh, they will get at least one uh, of those Grammys I don't know I don't know I don't know if there's ever been another HBCU that's got a Grammy if there is I, I hadn't heard about it uh, I suspect uh, back in the day, the Fisk Jubilee Singers were good enough because uh, that's, that's part of our history and our heritage and really the forerunners to uh, choral uh, groups like the Aeolians, Fisk Jubilee Singers. singers. That's, that's, that's our history right there. That's our heritage. Hey, Dr. Rita Mercer calling in uh, from uh, Los Angeles, or viewing from Los Angeles. Glad to have you. This time we're going to have... Um, our, our prayer by uh, Elder Philip. Lord, we thank you uh, for this day that you have made, and we are uh, going to be uh, glad and rejoice in it. Uh, we thank you for uh, the platform that you have given us uh, to share relevant 
information in this time and age. And we thank you for every uh, speaker. We thank you for the conversation, for the dialogue that will proceed forth. And we thank you for uh, just uh, encouraging us and in, in, um, equipping us with the knowledge in which we need to make informed decisions in our everyday life. We thank you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank now you. This, I was going to say, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Now at this time, uh, we're going to open up uh, uh, the lines for any testimonies that anyone would like to share at this time. Um, uh, are there any testimonies that uh, uh, you would like to share about the goodness of God? Anything that you're thankful for, anything that you're grateful for, God is still on the throne. He's still doing uh, uh, miraculous good things. Hallelujah. He's still providing. He's still protecting. So uh, if you'd like to share any testimony, uh, you can unmute your um, your device and uh, uh, freely share. Good morning. And... Um... Happy Sabbath to those of you who worship on the Sabbath. I give God praise and honor and glory on today. I just want to quickly thank God for um, for uh, this this time that we're in right now. And God has been continually uh, blessing me and blessing my family. Um, every Saturday with the information that has been shared, Apostle, it's been such a blessing and I have been able to share the information with others um, that are close to me, and it's been a, a great benefit for them as well. So I, I just want to thank God for that, and I pray that he will continue to um, do a work uh, in you and do a work in, within our ministry. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you for sharing that uh, testimony. Um, uh, I'd like to share a testimony uh, here. It's here we're uh, what nine, uh, nine ten months in uh, with this uh, COVID, and um, and uh, my wife and I we run an essential business, a daycare business, and we only shut down for about maybe a week. But uh, uh, despite all that time, God has uh, protected us. We haven't had any COVID cases within our daycare, uh, within our family, and. Uh, and we are just so grateful and thankful for God's uh, protection and, and his provisions during this season. So I give God praise for that. Amen. Amen. And that is huge. Uh, you, 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 I, um, when, one day when, uh, I think it was August, it was August when Dr. Brown was on at the end in my uh, closing remarks that talked about the doorposts applying the mm -hmm. blood to the doorpost. So you all must mm -hmm. have applied the, door, the, the blood to the doorpost <laughs> back in March, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Not to have any incidents. I mean, that's huge. That is only the blood of Jesus. That is mm -hmm. only the power of prayer. Uh, because, I mean, you've just got so many, you know, people coming in who've been, you know, you don't know where they've been. And you don't know what they've been in contact with. And you bring them in every day and so mm -hmm. that's huge thank you for sharing that amen are there any other testimonies you would like to share at this time all right well uh, apostle yes sir all right well uh since uh we started we started in march and uh we have appreciated the faithfulness of uh of the viewers and listeners and uh, we encourage you to give. And as you'll see on the screen there, you can simply use your camera and uh, bring up the QR codes there for Cash App and Venmo. And you can support this, uh, this uh, broadcast, this show, this service, and that we are trying to share with the community and with the world every every week so please please help us in our efforts to get the word out and we feel blessed and honored and privileged that you support us with your presence your prayers and your giving on next week on next week we will have with us 
uh, Dr. Ken Marino, psychologist, author, and professor, and she's no stranger to the Rainbow Church. She's come and preached to us in times past. I think she's written three, four, five books, and she's going to be speaking to us on the subject healing family trauma, healing family trauma, and that's certainly a, a very uh, important uh, subject. Uh, to consider. She has a very wide network um, from Nigeria and she does global trainings, global trainings in trauma uh, from all over the world. And so we're excited about having her on next week and we're looking forward to that. So you don't want to miss that. Also, um, Elder Nola, please lead us into our prayer and our intercessory prayer time. Good morning, saints. Good morning. Do we have any special prayer requests? You see, okay. Sister Kenya. Pray for the Esco family. Gotcha. Anything else? Yes, yes. Okay, giving God the praise. We give him praise because he has ensured that everything we possibly could care about, need, need protection from, he has made provisions for. Hallelujah. In the word Jeremiah 33 verse 3 he says, call upon me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things which you know not. He also says when two or more are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. So join me, Father. Hallelujah. Join us. Let us beseech the Father to meet the needs. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise this morning. We thank you for health and strength, and we thank you for another beautiful Sabbath day. We thank you, Lord, that you've made it cool so some of the fires can be sub subdued. Hallelujah. We also thank you, Lord, that you've made it possible for us to be here today. We thank you, Lord, that you've watched over us. You've protected us. You've kept our families. You've made sure the businesses stayed open. You've made sure that we did not con contract any unusual um, disease or whatever this, this week. You've kept us, and we give you praise. Yes. Today, we lift up all of the workers who have been working through this COVID period, we ask that you would touch their families, that you would touch all the essential workers and the doctors and medical staff, Lord, who have been working diligently behind the scenes and in front of the scenes, doing what needs to be done to help the environment. We ask that you would continue to touch the economy and small businesses, especially those um, who are owned and, and operated by our saints. We ask that you watch over everything in the name, in name of Jesus. We lift up um, those who've lost loved ones through this virus, and we ask that you would comfort them and comfort their families. Draw close to them, Lord, and give them insight, hallelujah, on the things that you would have them do to continue to protect themselves. We ask that you would touch our national situation, that you would touch the upcoming uh, voting that comes in November, we ask, Lord, that you would watch over all of the plans and, and the schemes, Father, that are out there, that you would be in control in the name of Jesus. We lift up our apostle in the first family and ask that you would continue to bless him and give him insight as he prepares every Sabbath for what we, uh, what we are able to enjoy on the Zoom church. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless him, give him insight, Keep his family, we pray in Jesus' name. And we lift up Dr. Milton Brown and his family and ask that the word that he brings us today would be so relevant and so fulfilling, so encouraging that it would touch us, Lord, and help us to be able to deal with what's out there even better. We thank you, Father, and we give you praise. We ask that you would be with the um, Esco family for Sister Kenya, and we ask, Lord, that you would bless them and that you would touch the finances um, for the niece's uh, loss. We thank you, Lord. We ask that you would be with Dr. Mandy's, um, Dr. Mandy's family, Father. They lost a loved one last week, and we ask that you would touch the funeral services that are going on today. We lift up uh, Robin Langley 
and ask that you would watch over them also, Father, in the name of Jesus. There are others, I'm sure, Father, we have not been able to give mention to, but you know. You're the almighty one. You know exactly what's going on. And as those requests are being said or unsaid, you hear them. Thank you, Lord, for answering prayer today. Thank you for ministering to each one of us in a special way today. We ask that you would open our eyes, that we would open our ears, that we would hear what you have for us today. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. As we've said uh, week after week, uh, we've been talking about Black Lives Matter, COVID-19, uh, very, very critical, uh, very, very critical subject matters. And interestingly enough, they go hand in hand uh, these days and you can't separate them and to separate them or not talk about them would be, would be irrelevant. Uh, so we're, we're, we're discussing them and, uh, and we're bringing them together. And um, week after week, we've been saying that uh, black lives do matter. And also that we must, in our spheres of influence, do what we can to even the playing field and uh, give black folks a better, a better chance, a hand up. And uh, not merely a hand out, but a hand up. And also we have said that uh, black, lives is ma black Lives Matter is more than a mural. And it's certainly more than one single organization. It's a, it's a movement for sure. Also, we've encouraged uh, along this vein to uh, your support of the uh, Los Angeles Southwest College Foundation. And uh, we have asked that uh, you give to, uh, to that cause. Uh, many of the students there are food insecure, have housing insecurities and they can certainly use our help. And you can give any donation that you like by just uh, clicking on or capturing that QR code there on your screen. Also in other news relative to Black Lives Matter, I mentioned it uh, last week and it certainly bears mentioning again, uh, um, California Governor Newsom signs a reparation bill into law and this is California Assembly Bill 3121 that uh, allows for um, there to be a discovery uh, panel and of nine members to look at the impact of slavery on African Americans. They have three years to do that. They're to come back in 2023 with recommendations and we appreciate um, the uh, Black uh, California Black Legislative Caucus Chair Assembly Member Shirley Weber, who authored uh, the uh, the bill. Also, if Black Lives Matter, Black votes matter. Uh, in 2016, approximately 1.5 million registered Blacks in Florida, Georgia, Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin did not even go to the poll. They didn't get up. Yeah, they probably got up. They didn't get out. They may have gotten out, but they didn't go to the polls. Uh, they just did not go. For a total of, what, 5 million registered blacks who did not vote in 2016, there is too much, way too much at stake uh, for us not to go to the polls. It is critical. And we know, this is interesting enough, watch this, 
So 25 million registered black folks didn't vote in 2016. Uh, 5 million registered black voters did not go in 2016, but 5 million people have already voted in early voter registration. So I would encourage you to get out early, beat the lines, uh, go to uh, vote.org and find out where you can vote. It's a serious, this is, and you've heard it's probably said every year, uh, every um, uh, uh, election, uh, presidential election, certainly. Uh, this, is the, this is one of the most important elections in our lifetime, and it has never been more true than this time. So we want to encourage you uh, to do that and uh, go early uh, and beat the crowds and make sure you, your ballots are accounted for. Relative to the COVID update, we won't get into so much here because uh, Dr. Brown is on hand, but I will just share with you the numbers. Uh, 37 million uh, cases globally and 1 million deaths. In the U.S., 7.7 million cases and 214,000 deaths, right? And as we said, um, uh, week after week, uh, the United States is uh, 5% of the population, 25% of those uh, who have died of COVID, 5% of the, the uh, total world population, and 25% of those who've died. So that is an interesting thing. We also uh, noted uh, last week that the White House is not exempt from <laughs> the corona virus. And so uh, this is really interesting because, uh, you know, the president and his ilk uh, did everything that they could not to adhere to the science. And in my estimate, it was just a matter of time. And we see that uh, there are nine people, nine people now, uh, including nine people, including the president and first lady, who have contracted uh, the COVID uh, virus. And uh, this picture you see here is in the Rose Garden at the announcement of the uh, nomination of uh, uh, Su Supreme Court Justice uh, nominee, uh, Amy Coney uh, Barrett. And, uh, and you can see where individuals were seating uh, during that time. Uh, you can see uh, Governor former Governor Chris Christie on the right side there in the aisle. He looks to be about uh, the third or fourth row. You can see Press Secretary Kaylee McElhaney uh, seems to be in about the fourth row. And of course, Mike Pence uh, on the first row and uh, First Lady Trump on the first row and uh, Kellyanne Conway on the second row. No wonder uh, Vice Presidential, Democratic Vice Presidential nominee Kamala Harris insisted on plexiglass, right? <laughs> you know, we, you, get, you can't blame her. And we see that uh, in South Carolina as well. South Carolina, uh, they, uh, the Democratic challenger is, is requesting for Lindsey Graham to do the same. And Lindsey Graham said he's not going to take no tests. <laughs> he's not, he don't want to use a plexiglass. So in the last debate, the uh, candidate, I can't, his name slips me right now, he didn't, uh, he brought his own plexiglass. That's funny. But, uh, you know, we just have to be safe at all costs. And as I've said, week after week, uh, it ain't sexy, but it saves lives. So keep um, doing, you know, taking all of the precautions. And one of the questions we'll be asking today, is COVID making a comeback? All right. So I want you to uh, take a moment right now and and set your watch parties uh, on Facebook, uh, on, on YouTube, what have you. Uh, this is important information that we're going to be talk about, talking about. That's right. Thank you, uh, Robin. Robin told me that was Jamie, uh, Jamie Harrison. Jamie Harrison, who is, the, um, who is uh, running against, um, uh, in South Carolina, he's running for Senate in South Carolina. Jamie Harrison, he's former... Uh, Democratic uh, Convention uh, Committee Chair. So set your uh, Facebooks, tell your friends, have them come on because it's going to be good. 
Good, 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 good information. So we have uh, Dr. Milton Brown. He's no stranger to us. This is his fourth time with us uh, on the on the show, and uh, we appreciate him. For those of you who do not know him, he's a brilliant man and uh, my uh, good friend, and we've drawn even closer over the last months of COVID. Some say there are no blessings in COVID, Dr. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> So Dr. Brown is a synthetic chemist, um, or we call him a, um, a physician scientist. He's an entrepreneur. He's married to the former Sandra Roper. Uh, they have four adult children. He um, has a uh, BS in biology from Oakwood in Huntsville, Alabama, a PhD organic chemistry, University of Ala uh, Alabama, Birmingham. Um, uh, uh, medical degree, University of Virginia, School of Medicine, Charlottesville, Virginia. He has worked as Associate Director, uh, Experimental Therapeutics, University of Virginia, Director of Drug Discovery Program, Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., Director of Drug Discovery and Development, uh, ANOVA in the um, District of Columbia, and uh, Counselor, National Toxology Program Board, Granted Programs Reviewer, um, NIH, National uh, Cancer Institute, Department of Defense, American Association for the Advancement of Science. And uh, he also is a recipient uh, of the Percy Julian Award and also Professor of Practice and Director of Drug Discovery Program at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. And so we welcome we welcome Dr. Brown with us again. Dr. Brown, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. How you doing, Pastor Thomas? Great to see you again. Doing Seems fabulous. like it, it's been a, forever. This month has passed, and uh, it's glad to, be, glad to be here with the, with the family of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Outstanding. So, so I told the saints that uh, I, said, I said Dr. Brown is really, he takes his, he takes his, uh, his works very seriously. He, he, he works hard, but he also plays hard. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell, us, tell us what it is that you do when you're not working. And we know you'd be, you be grinding and taking <laughs> care of your business and, and making things happen. What I did not say in your introduction is I think you have 30 plus patents to your credit. And uh, so you're a hard worker. But what is, what is it that you enjoy doing when you're not working? Oh, well, you know, I, you know, I love to talk about that place where the ocean, where the salt water meets the land. I love fishing. <laughs> uh, I fish in all capacities. And uh, in fact, in fact, I'll be out your way uh, on November 3rd, flying into San Diego. And I'm going to spend uh, 10 days out in the, in the ocean. Uh, about a thousand miles out past uh, Cabo. Okay. And I'm going to fish for, for, uh, for, for fish. Yes. All right. So uh, you should... anyway, I did, I had a great, great, uh, a great fishing uh, summer. And, uh, and last month was uh, kind of a really awesome time to get, get in the water. Excellent. Excellent. Fantastic. Phenomenal. All right. Well, we're going to get right into it. We've got a lot of catching up to do because you were probably fishing last month and you couldn't be with us. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a lot. So the question we are asking is, is COVID-19 making a comeback? And, you know, so we've seen hospitalizations are, are trending upwards. Last Thursday this week, 56,000 COVID cases in one day. And this is the highest for one day in the last two months, right? I think in all but 11 states that are experiencing an uptick. So the question is, is COVID making a comeback? Hey, where has it gone? <laughs> you, you I expected to you to say that. <laughs> to, make, to make a comeback. And, and, uh, you you know the dog is still in the yard. Yeah, uh, it's still there. Nothing has happened. The things that we talked about to impact this virus would be herd immunity. That means sixty percent of all United States would have to be infected 
that's about 260, 270 million people. Well, that hasn't happened. It's not going to happen because we're not getting long-term protection or antibody uh, memory uh, when we get infected by the live virus. Uh, studies show that we get less than three months hmm. uh, in some studies. So when you get infected, uh, if you do obtain, if you do uh, reach antibody levels, if your body does produce antibodies to the COVID-19, uh, it seems like those antibodies are only lasting about about three about three months. And so you are a candidate to be reinfected. So you go right back in the pool of being able to be reinfected. Mm -hmm. So we can't get the herd immunity vaccine. We would need that to impact the virus. Uh, that would impact the herd immunity by providing uh, uh, immune immune uh, uh, immune response to the, to the virus. But we we aren't going to we aren't going to make that. And I it's it's hard to say if we'll even get a vaccine. To be honest, um, the vaccine has currently has some some problems. Well, we're going to talk um, about the vaccine in a little bit. We're going to talk about the vaccines a little bit. So hold on to that yeah. thought, if you would. And then, and then the third, the third thing uh, uh, is the therapy. If we're talking about what impacts the virus to make it go somewhere, to make it go away, right? And so we're talking about herd immunity, the vaccine, and then if producing a therapy that would make the virus instead of it the multi-organ disease that we see it, it, it as it manifests itself. So we could make a therapy that just you, you'd have a virus seven to 10 days and then you'd get better. You wouldn't go in the hospital. You take the medicine and you get better. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. And, uh, you know, so those three things impact the way uh, the virus will will manifest itself in our society. None of those things have happened. So the question is, will COVID make a comeback? <laughs> COVID hasn't gone anywhere yet. <laughs> uh, okay. And I, 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 uh, I suspected that you would answer that question in that way. But I thought, <laughs> but I thought we'd uh, advertise it in that manner because there are. But we, we can't act like there aren't people who are thinking like that, though. There are people who are, no, no, who no, are you're, acting. You're right. Yeah. Like it's gone. Like business as usual. pre uh, COVID, you know, uh, responses and reactions and activities, you know, so. Yeah, you know, I want, I, I, when you say that, that's, that's very meaningful. That's the time. There, there's a group that I want to really talk about, and I don't know what segment you want to talk about it on, mm -hmm. but there's a group between 18 and 34 that, are, that, that we now know is, is the hot spot. 18 to 34. Mm -hmm. That's the group that's catching this virus. Yeah. A high incidence. Yeah, and and there's some data that just came out, published in the um, the, the Journal of the American Medical Association (JAMA), which uh, says if if you're 18 to 34 and you, you get hospitalized, you got a 21 percent chance of being on a uh, in intensive care. Wow. You got a 10 percent chance of being on a ventilator. Wow. And no, that group has a 2.7 percent chance of dying. Wow. But what makes it even more uh, devastating is that three percent of all the, the eighteen to twenty to eighteen to thirty four group are having to be discharged not to home, but to a post acute care center hmm. like a step down unit. Really, not going home immediately. Wow. So it, it, we got to be real careful the long term consequences of this virus. Uh, we'll talk about it later, uh, but the long-term consequences is not really being talked about. Um, you know, the hospitalization, the ventilation, the the early death, but the long-term consequences of what this virus is doing, and particularly to our hearts. Mm -hmm. Okay, and mm -hmm. particularly to our hearts, mm -hmm. is what we have to really be careful about. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. And since you mentioned that, I'll go ahead and ask you about that. So, so I've read stuff that you've sent me that said, uh, well, we first started off as a respiratory. And so then we moved, uh, when a little more data came in, understood that it was really attacking the heart. It was a, you know, a, a cardiac issue. And now we're hearing also that it's a GI issue. 
so that it, it's really impacting the GI in ways that we did not know earlier. Yeah, we well, you know, on our show, on, on the on the first show, we go back to the first time we had our talk. I talked about the GI and the incidence of of, of poor prognosis. If you had the GI component along with the the lung uh, the lung lung issues, that those patients had forty eight percent of those patients didn't do well, hmm. and there was a high incidence of, of of mortality in that group. And that that first came out of out of China, out of Wuhan. They 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 provided that information to us, and uh, we we didn't we didn't respect it or respond to it until it happened to us, and so. Uh, you know, now now we're seeing that the, the GI infection. Um, you know, you're getting the. You know, I'm gonna tell you this: uh, 60 to 80 percent of patients that are in the ICU are also on dialysis. Hmm. Yeah. So not just ventilators. It's yeah. dialysis. It's, it's attacks the the proximal tubule of the kidney, and you get a acute tubular necrosis. And then uh, you get a compromised acute kidney injury to the to the kidney, which can result in a chronic kidney disease, which which in some cases may result in uh, dialysis for the rest of your life. Hmm. So, I mean, this is, this is a serious thing. We're having a covid brain where we see people have a, a, a confusion uh, and, and we're, we're seeing uh, a, a severe uh, uh, in, where, where, where people are clotting, blood clotting and strokes mm -hmm. uh, as a result. So, you know, what, what this means for the patient is that we need more time for research. We need to understand the long-term effects of COVID-19 uh, and the complications that, that they may encounter down the line. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and so I'm, I'm, you know, we, we're watching this and, and it's unfolding before our eyes because, you know, Dr. Thomas, we stop saying novel coronavirus. We, we just say COVID-19. Right, right. And, and really, and really, when the, it's novel, that means we have not seen this virus before. Right. We've seen cousins to it. Right? right. We saw SARS. We saw MERS. But we have not seen COVID-19. And, uh, and, and so you ask, you know, will COVID make a comeback? Well, COVID got some friends joining the, the fight here in, in, in the next month or two. Mm. Not a comeback. It's going to be a it's going to be an all out war. We got, you know, G4 coming. That's the swine flu, the, another version of the swine flu. We got regular old flu influenza, which you know you should get your flu shot if you if you can, uh, and then and then we'll have COVID nineteen. All we'll have we'll have three of these things right in the mix. And how are we to tell between the symptoms between one or the other? Uh, it, it's going to be really hard. But I want to say this: I did some. You know, I I love to bring some new facts to you. <laughs> you got something for us today. I got to bring some new facts. In uh, 2019, last year, mm -hmm. the flu killed 34,200 U.S. citizens. Uh, COVID in eight months have killed 214,000 citizens. Right. So, so, so when our community say it says, or when someone tells you uh, that this is just like the flu, no, 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 no. This is not like the flu. In fact, your president has said that <laughs> well, at, as late at, as a week ago, I believe. Hey, look look at the numbers, Pastor Thomas. Look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. The flu killed 34,000. The breast cancer killed 41,000. Prostate killed, prostate cancer killed 31,000. Listen to this. Suicides killed 47,000. Homicides killed 19,000. That totals up to around 174,000. COVID-19 killed 214,000 just by itself. Right. Yeah. We're talking about breast cancer, prostate cancer, suicides, homicides. It's killed death. It's killed more people in the US than all of those diseases combined. Yeah. Wow. Let's get real. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's true. That is uh, definitely something something to think about. And I tell you, man, every time you come on, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put a cellophane or something around my house. <laughs> I'm trying to put a bubble around my car because you just mess me up every time you come on. But let's progress a little further. So uh, the Amy uh, Coney Barrett nomination in the Rose Guard Rose Garden. Uh, obviously, we mentioned earlier that nine people contracted COVID, including the President and First Lady. And, uh, and, and it seemed as though, as I mentioned, those who were just in the first four roles. And uh, Dr. Fauci called that uh, a super spreader event. And what does he mean by that? And, and, and what do you think is the cause for those individuals having it contracted, as opposed to those who didn't who were in similar proximity? Well, first of all, we don't know all the data, past Thomas, about who actually caught it. Uh, we know 30, or more, over 34 p- people in, right in the White House wing have caught it. Right in West Wing. But you're talking about that event, but it also impacted as a super spreader. You know, it's, it, he brought it into work. I mean, imagine how to duck and weave and duck and bob in, in that environment. I mean, l- literally. I mean, you got a person in the White House who is spreading it to his staff, to those who are there working tirelessly in the White House to make the White House run and they're being infected by a person who is regarded as a super spreader. That means that they, is, they, they, they are coming in contact with, uh, with events that at that event, it, it, it caused a high level of infection uh, among, among the people. And it wasn't just that event. There was, uh, there was uh, an event uh, in New Jersey that, that for donors mm-hmm. that, he went, that, that he went to knowing he was already infected. Right. And so, we, we, you know, the, the, this, is, uh, this, is a, this is troubling. Yeah. I mean, many, many of these people, even though they may have no symptoms. And let me say this, let me say this, Dr. Thomas, because we, we got to really cover this point. I want, I want people who are listening on Facebook and, 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 and listening on the different mediums to understand this point. Mm-hmm. If you have, if you're asymptomatic or, and that means you don't have symptoms, so you, you got infected, but but you feel like you're a, a super stud. You feel like oh, I, it didn't bother me. I'm I, like the president, I the elderberry. I I like did great. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't get the fever, the headache, the vomiting, the the, the different th- scenarios that go on. It's okay. COVID has something for you. Wow. Seventy percent of patients are showing up three months later that were asymptomatic that had very little. Uh, uh, symptoms at all. 78% are showing up with a cardiomyelitis, with an infection, infl- inflammation of the, of the, of the heart. Mm-hmm. And that's going to lead to long-term problems where because your, your heart gets inflamed and then thickened and you get a left ventricular dysfunction, you, you are, you're going to be uh, impacted by, by your heart being compromised and you came out of the group who were asymptomatic. That's what I want them to understand. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's huge. So 45% of the population is asymptomatic. Yeah, that's right. 40%, 40, 45, whichever number you want, either one, if 40% are asymptomatic, that means people, but people are bragging, oh, when I got the virus, I, I, didn't, I didn't really, it didn't really impact me that much. <laughs> It didn't impact you then, right. but it's going to get you later. Right. But but the reality is it did impact them then, and it is impacting them, and it is going to show up later. We saw the kid, uh, it was down later in my notes, but uh, there was a kid who was at North Carolina College. She was asymptomatic, and she died of COVID complications. Nothing there was nothing, and this was a relatively short time. There's another kid, uh, college basketball player, 19 years old, 
asymptomatic, dies. You know, and to your point, that 18 to 34, you know, that is the new hotspot. That is the new, you know, not only are they the carriers, the asymptomatic carriers, but now they are the, you know, the trend for where uh, the virus is showing up the most. You know, Dr. Dr. Thomas, I, I got to tell you this. This this past week, uh, we had a scare. Mm. Um, I, I do a lot of work in the community with the AU programs, and uh, one of one of our really talented kids got a got a scholarship to a big time university last year. So he he started this this year, and uh, they're they're playing, they're they're scrimmaging, they're playing, they're lifting weights, they're. Yeah, they they're just working as as like nothing is going on. Right. Three weeks ago, he got infected. He came home for ten days, and it it, it I, I I talked to his father, and and it was I, it was the Holy Spirit just said to me, tell him that he needs to get an EKG. So I I'm, I I told him I said, hey man, I I need you to get an EKG for your son, and get his blood work. Well, why? Why? Because this virus is attacking the hearts of young people. Do you know? Last week he got he went back to to this big time uh, basketball program. They they have they have physicians there. They took his his uh, blood blood and gave him an EKG. He had a he had a troponin level that was as high as the, a person who has a myocardial infarction. Has a it's heart attack. Huge inflammation in his heart. There's a world class athlete that had now in, inflamed heart. It, 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 we got to stay away from this virus. Yeah. And when you get it and you don't have symptoms, you have to be extra careful because the COVID 19 is coming after your heart. Mm. Yeah. So, so, uh, so at the time when you talked to dad, there were no symptoms. He was asymptomatic at the time. No, no, he he had symptoms. He, oh, okay. he was he had headache, fever. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And the chills and, and and feeling bad for ten days. No, he he was home feeling bad. I see. Um, but even he got the cardiac problems too. Oh, and wow. what we're finding is is that in the recovery process for athletes, this is why the NBA and the NFL are so concerned. Is that the recovery that when when they're recovering and they try to exercise, it's exacerbating the problem. Hmm. So you're trying to recover, you're trying to get back in the weight room, trying to run, you're trying to get back to your normal physical. Uh, there's a study, and I can send you that study that shows that people are that extreme exercise and COVID don't mix. Wow. It's a, it's a it causes a problem. Hmm. And so, you know, we, we have to be, we have to, we have to, we are learning about this new virus. And I, I don't want our 18s to 34s to think just because you got it and you were asymptomatic or I, I, that's a big word. Sometimes it just goes over people's heads. When you got it, you didn't have, you didn't, it didn't do much to you uh, to say it a little more clearer. It did do something to you, but it's not, not going to manifest itself till later. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I just want want them to understand that it, mm -hmm. the, the simple thing is stay away from it. Yeah, right. Yeah, and you know it gets harder and harder as we experience this COVID fatigue. You know, just not getting the social outlets that we're accustomed to. But uh, let me ask you this: uh, I don't know if you followed Chris Cuomo's uh, journey uh, when he had COVID, but. One of the things he was saying in the midst of it, and some of the most challenging time, is he said that he said he felt like he was in a fight and mm -hmm. that he could not give in to that. Good, couldn't give in to it. He had to fight it because if he didn't fight it, he would, you know, it would overtake him. Can you give us some insight into what he's, he's, he was trying to communicate there? Well, I guess he felt in his in his spirit that there was uh, that 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 he was it, it could potentially get him get him overcome him, and he was willing himself to not allow that to happen. Um, you know, a, a lot of things with this virus can happen mentally as well. 
that you you can experience some you know some early psychosis. There are, there are patients, young patients, who are coming in having seizures. So that means the virus has infected their brain. And so you know because of that, you get this maybe even a temporary psychosis that can occur. But nonetheless, um, he he felt like you know the virus if he if he lay down and, and gave up that he was going to give up his life. And, uh, and many people feel that way and they, they fight, they fight hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now you were talking about affecting your brain. Uh, that's, that's what, uh, Congresswoman, uh, Nancy Pelosi feels is going on with your president. Yeah. She wants to invoke, uh, what is it? Uh, article 25. This situation is he's taking death. Uh, uh, the the steroid and uh, dexamethasone. The, the dexamethasone. Um, you know the steroid rage that you get sometimes with high dose steroids too. And and what they what they were doing with that, people want to say, well, you know, why did he get that that treatment? Um, that treatment is being given to everyone who is in going the into the ICU. Oh, in the ICU. So not so. Just imagine you get sick, and you don't come to the hospital. That's one group. You get sick, and you go to the emergency department. They're not giving you dexamethasone. They're not giving you the Regeneron cocktail of antibodies, and they're not giving you remdesivir. They're they're just they're not treating those patients who come into the emergency room with these therapies because they're for emergency use only for the group that then goes into the hospital and then progresses to the ICU. Those patients are getting this, this treatment. And so what they did was they moved those, those treatments that were are, are reserved for, for the ICU or very sick patients to a person who just started his uh, COVID. And, and, and this the dexamethasone, the steroid, fights not the virus. It doesn't fight the virus. It fights the inflammation caused by the virus. And so what they were trying to do is stop that storm from happening as an early intervention, the cytokine storm, and cause the host, you, you the president, causing him, him to be able to try to respond to, to this virus uh, with by block, by knocking down the inflammation, but guess what? That that therapy is not meant for frontline therapy. That f therapy can cause a psychosis and a steroid rage. That that therapy, uh, when it can mask the symptoms, uh, Doctor Thomas can mask the symptoms. So when they pull him off, you can't keep him on high dose steroids. When they pull him off, that infection may just come back raging. Hmm. So we got we got a lot to see here. We we but this thing hasn't played out yet. Sure, sure. Yeah, Doctor Moore wanted to know what's going on, and you know what's interesting. Uh, we're in unprecedented time, as unprecedented times in every way, right? Uh, but but it, it it was amazing as I listened to journalists and reporters try to say, we can't tell you what's going on. The, the, the White House routinely lies, <laughs> and we have not verified it independently, right? So obviously, when we were first told about the president, uh, some said, I don't believe it. He always lying, you know, and the reality is, whether he got COVID or not, he's manipulating and lying about the process because that's just what he does, you know. That's just who he is. Well, you know? let, let me say this. Um we we now have proof that they aren't daily testing and the reason why we have proof is because we we asked for what was the last day he was negatively tested and they can't produce it right so so he hasn't been testing daily right, right. he's just been living willy-nilly when in regards to this 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 virus and now it caught him yeah. And, and he's out of the woods yet with this thing. And, and, and we, you know, we don't we don't wish, wish any bad will on him. But but the way he's handling this situation uh, as, as, as ignoring it, um, downplaying it, uh, it, it it's, 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 it's very sad. 
and it casts a terrible light on developing a national policy, which we need desperately in order to fight this virus. Right. Yeah. Uh, you said something, too. I'm going to go back to it. Uh, you said that a normal patient comes in to the ER and they are usually treated for, I guess, any respiratory or fever, things like that. But it's not until they get to the ICU that they're, they're treated with these other, uh, like the Regeneron and the, um, what was it called, uh, Hexa, what is it called, Hexa something? Oh, the Dexamethasone. Dexamethasone. Dexa which is the steroid. Yeah. That's a veer. Yeah. And that's a veer. And that's a veer. Yeah. So, so I never heard that said like that. And, and then in his case, he got it on the front end as opposed to the latter end, which is, you know, interesting. And that won't happen for the average person. So that is uh, interesting And, and you don't want it to happen. And, and, and Dr. Thomas, you don't want it to happen to the average person. We don't want to be giving dexamethasone to people up front like that. It's not a drug that you want to use in that way. Mm. And so we're not giving um, resdemosvir uh, to those patients. There's no reason to give it to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the effects that it has even on the very, very sick is, is, is very modest at best. 15-day mm -hmm. uh, hospital stay with not taking remdesivir. Uh, 11 days in the hospital if you take it, 11% death if you don't take it, and an 8.9% death if you take it. So, I mean, it's, it's, the mo it's modest at best. Wow. And so we, it's something we don't want to give to, to people in the, in the beginning because these therapies are not proven. These therapies are not meant to be used that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it causes calls into question those who applied these kinds of, of, of therapies to the president in this way, it calls into question their practice of medicine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I know you're not the president's personal doctor or anything, and you can only speak, you know, so far. But just based on what you have heard and understood about him, is he capable at this point of hitting the campaign trail again uh, within the next week? No, no. And, and to be honest with you, Dr. Gup, uh, Sanjay uh, Gupta, who is a, a fabulous physician, uh, was listening to him talking, and then he pointed out the, a point that we all heard. He had a deep, raspy cough. Yeah, He's yeah. Got some lung infection. On the interview, uh, with yeah. on the interview with Rush Limbaugh, he went into a coughing spasm. It appeared at yeah. at, at a point in time. And and, and that. That is probably masked by the dexamethasone, which, you know, we'll see in the next three or four days. I mean, it's no, we're, it, it, it's definitely not out of the woods. And mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're, we pray for the president that he, that, that this doesn't, he doesn't succumb to this, this virus. Um, but, but it's being very political, it's politicizing and using this virus to, to show he's strong or for some reason wants to ignore it. I looked at the vice president's uh, debate, and uh, his wife came up on the stage, took off her mask, came up on the stage. I mean, I'm not understanding why 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 they're taking this position when the masks are really really there to protect and to 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 give us uh, uh, some 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 uh, protection from this virus. I mean, I, I just don't understand it. I just it just it it's, it's it just gets you know, <laughs> it's beyond beyond the capacity of any thinking person. Uh, yeah. Kitty Anderson says that yet the White House event uh, today uh, they're planning for a major campaign event on Monday in Florida. Uh, just irresponsible by by any measure. So uh, with regard to. Um, him, it's just a kind of a wait and see. I want to go back to schools for a moment. So we talked about uh, what was going on in K through 12, and it seems like um, we're not hearing so much about them in the news anymore, uh, more so higher ed, and that could be fueled maybe by the parties, 
Uh, I'm not sure, but we heard that North North uh, Northeastern University had an outbreak and uh, they were having parties. Students were subsequently expelled, not given their money back, you know. And then they resorted to, and I think a number of co- colleges are doing this, uh, test every three days. Uh, Notre Dame, uh, UNC Chapel Hill, uh, University of Madison, all tried to open up, but then after a number of cases, decided to go online just to preserve uh, and take precautions. So uh, what are you finding uh is is going on in the higher ed uh and uh are, are they on top of it is the k-12 through on top of it are we seeing fewer incidences in k-12 through is so what's going on there no no they're not on top of it colleges knew the risk but they reopened anyway and the sports uh, arenas are opening uh college sports are 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 football are now being played and kids are getting sick continue to get sick um and 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 it's 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 really horrible given the fact that uh you know people can die Mm -hmm. people can have long-term effects from this virus i mean look the notre dame's president got sick right he was at he was at the white house right (laughs) Right. And got sick. Right. Look, look, I mean, the leadership. They're uh, incidentally calling for his resignation for his irresponsibility. <laughs> it's irresponsible. And, and, and you're the leader and you're doing these kinds of things. You know, what, the schools have no chance. Kids should be still, um, still taking online courses. There should be no, there should be no in-classroom teaching. At the moment, hmm. but I say this, I say this, Doctor Thomas, because we got a big game changer that's ha- that's come. Yeah, that's hold, on, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't get to that just yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm just saying. My yeah. point is, is we yeah. wait. We're, we all we need to do is wait because the big game changer is here. Right. We're gonna get through this. Right. Right. And so the, the the point is is that we have people. Who, who who are putting these children and kids at risk. We got parents who don't even understand. I talk to parents all the time who say, well, my, my son got a full scholarship. He has to go to the university so he can get it. He, they, they told him he can't stay home. Right. He has to go to the university. That's right. Well, you're throwing them. I mean, my, my, it, how important is that over someone's life? Like, I mean, this is your kid. And so I'm, I'm, I'm reaching out to the parents to say, please, you know, some of the parents will say, well, I put my kid off campus. They still at risk if they got to go into school and if they have to go on those on a campus, they're putting themselves at risk. Mm. One of the things that's going to be impactful, Dr. Thomas, and then you, you, you we, we want to we want to share this with the community, with the church family, with your platform, is that we have to change our behavior. Mm. So we're going to have to learn how to live with this virus. And and one of the things that is going to come into play is how we implement this game changer into our daily lives so that we can go back to going to school safely, going to uh, class safely, going to concerts safely, going to eat out safely, going on vacation safely. What, What has transpired and what has developed will open all of those things up for us, but we just have to learn how to change our behavior. Yeah. And uh and I, I want to talk about that in the in the in the segment to come. Okay. And I did, did I miss that? Oh yeah, I missed something very important that I wanted to raise too. So the former um oh that, I guess that's in another section. Um I'll finish this um school section. So, you know, I, I think we, you know, we talked in August, just I think the week before our alma mater, Oakville University, opened up and, uh, you know, and, and, and you gave a suggestion not to open up, but do everything online. And I think I've heard of anywhere, just depending on who's saying it, uh, 30 to 50 cases, you know, and in some cases they don't want you to know the cases, right? 
And, uh, and we do know that there was an issue of transparency and the parents and the students had a conversation, town hall meeting, and then they produced a report. So there was that. And the report said, I think at that point, what one, uh, I can't even remember the numbers, so I won't say them. And then I think we heard that they were quarantined, quarantined female dorm, male dorm. And I think maybe 100 plus students may have been quarantined at over, you know, time frame. And again, these numbers are shaky. Don't hold me to them. But, uh, but the point I'm making is it did not skip our school because it's God's school, <laughs> because it's a religious school, because it's a black school, didn't skip it. But I, what I can say, what I really believe in my heart, I thought, I thought that, well, I always said that Oakwood would be shut down uh, by, uh, before Halloween. And I said that based on the fact that kids kiss, <laughs> kids, kids dance together, they, they hug each other, they get together, or whatever have you. And, and not only Oakwood, but any school, really, because that's what co-eds, that's what college students do. But I will say, I think it is the grace of God that has kept the school from more incidences uh, and positive cases. What do you say to that? Well, of course, the grace of God, he can decide who, who, who survives and who doesn't. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to say this. Uh, Oakwood University is a place that I love. Um, I've sent mo almost all of my kids there. Uh, I did not send my son back because they, they, uh, there's no reason to send him back into, uh, into that uh, situation of being, uh, being infected. And, and until until we get a handle and begin to use some of the new the new developments that we have, there's no sense of, of having that. Now, since they open, they can't send those kids back home infected. They got they got they got more kids. Like, let, let's put it. Let me say this. And they should they should they should tell the truth about what's happening there. Mm. But 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 what is known is that they are saturated in 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 the places for for. Uh, for quarantining, they they are saturated. They they got over hundred more than hundred kids quarantined. Yeah. So they you, you're talking about you know a school that has 875 students and you got you know a eighth of them quarantined. You got a four percent, five percent that have the virus. I mean, please. I mean, African Americans die five times are more likely to die five times more than others. And so we we we're at risk of this virus, and now we're placed the students, parents are parents who sent their kids back are involved in it as well. You accepted the risk, but now you can't send them home with the virus. Wow! And so now you have to be, begin to to try to find a way to 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 get them through this time, and and then reassess it about the end of the semester. Um, it's it's a sad situation and, and one that I, I just hope uh, gets resolved with, with common sense and, and uh, with, with uh, following the science. Yeah. Um, yeah. So <laughs> you, you, you said they're not following the science. They're doing like the president. <laughs> yeah. They're doing like the White House. They're not following the science. <laughs> it's, unbelievable. it's unbelievable that HBCUs of any kind would be open to end on to in-person classes. Mm. I mean, I, I'd like to know how many of the faculty have been sick. Yeah. I mean, the staff who clean the, the rooms and clean the halls and and, and 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 take care of the lawns. I mean, those people have been sick. Right. Um, I mean, this is not a place where kids can go into the cafeteria and get a meal anymore. Right. Right. I mean, it, it's this is this is a place you at you at risk of getting infection by just going to the restroom. Right. I mean, personal interactions, you can't interact with peers, can't interact with teachers, no sports programs. I mean, it's limited. You have no teacher-student personal interaction. It's not a socialized environment like we've known before, Dr. Thomas. This is, this is, this is, this is a different college, even high school situation. Right. And, and, and it's, it's, it's sad that, um, that we're not following the science because guess what? The science has provided some new revelations and some big time game changers that will allow us to, to matriculate safely uh, in the next year. And I'm, I'm excited about it. Mm -hmm. 
Excellent. So, uh, so we talked a little bit about the um, the vaccines. I want to hit the vaccine a little bit more right now. So, uh, so when do you think a vaccine will be ready? And explain to our audience what an FDA emergency uh, provision or permission means and why the experts are saying, come on, you know, you, you know, follow the science and not just give them the certificate to do it. Well, emergency use applies to a certain situation where you have an emergency. And, and most of the times those are reserved for patients who are in ICU. So emergency compassionate use and they will allow the, the person to get an experimental therapeutic. But, but let's grant it, the, the therapy should go through phase one, safety, 20 to 60 patients, phase two, efficacy, that's, you know, 40, to, we, we, sometimes we test as many as 100. Um, and then phase three is where you open it up to, to 30,000 patients, big, a big number, and you're looking at safety in a larger group you're looking at how to is it is it efficacious because in, in phase one if you only have 20 to 60 patients you may not even pick up a, 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 a toxicity from the from the vaccine but like we're seeing now we saw the transverse uh, myelitis uh which is uh which is a spinal cord inflammation from this from this vaccine that, that has occurred now and, and, and it has causing some pause as to, you know, a number of people have now shown up with this with this this adverse side effect. And so it, it caused some of the, the, the trials to be halted. And and you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna side and I'm not siding with Camilla Harris uh, about uh pol the politics right now. I'm I'm talking I'm siding with her on her statement. If the if Fauci and, 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 and us scientists evaluate and find this vaccine to be safe and efficacious, I'm taking it. And I'm evaluating too. But I'm not taking nothing from Trump, just like she said. <laughs> and I'm uh, not taking hey, nothing you, from hey, the that's, Hey, that's political, man. That ain't no science. That's political. <laughs> that is not political. Not you really. I just teased it. You I know why that's not political? Because, yeah, I'm just because Trump has been tr because the FDA and the CDC and the Health and Human Services have been manipulated and controlled, and now those agencies which were trustworthy to us, mm. trustworthy, mm. they were they were agencies we relied on. They're not tr trustworthy now. Right. FDA is allowing emergency uh, use for things that haven't even finished cl clinical trials. And, and we don't even have data to show that they have any efficacy right. or, or that they have any safety, really. And so it, it, it compromised. CDC saying that uh, knowing that the virus is airborne, knowing that the virus is highly uh, infectious, says the, the virus is, is not airborne. And then they reverse and say it is airborne. Then they reverse and say it's not airborne, knowing that it's airborne all the time. Right. I mean, it's, and then you got the HHS, who the hospitals are now having to not send their data to the CDC, have to go to the HHS, and they're, and they're compromised. So, you know, we, we, we're going to have to, look, we're not going to have another Tuskegee incident. I guarantee you that. And we're not going to yeah. do it in my house and in our communities on the platforms that you have, the platforms that we speak uh, regularly during the week and during uh, during the during the, the week, we we're getting it out to the grassroots through the churches and through our grassroots uh, 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 informational uh, uh, pipeline. That, you know, Facebook, Twitter, those types of things, Instagram. That we have to be careful about this vaccine, and it has to be safe and effective before we use it. Yeah. Right. Wow, that's you said. A, you said a mouthful, my brother, and you said you agree with with uh, Kamala. You are not taking it. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, I'm but, and that's sad. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's so sad uh, because the confidence has eroded. You know, and Kenny, yeah. Kenny, Kenny Anderson said he has zero confidence. <laughs> 
Sister Kenya yeah. says she has zero confidence. That's unfortunate. But let me share let me share this with you. Uh, former director of the CDC, Jeffrey Copeland, he said that even if a vaccine is developed, even if yeah. a vaccine is developed, he says we will not be able to go back to business as usual like pre-COVID without no. social distancing and without masks. Because the vaccine is not going to be preventative or curative. No, and not, not just that. We won't be able to get it to everyone in time either. Hmm. And so it'll roll out to the people on the front line. It's going to be before it gets to the normal population. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you this. China told us six months ago, it's 30, 30. They've identified over 30 COVID mutants. Right. Right. We know of three in the United States right now. The one that came from from Wuhan to to Washington State, the one that came from Wuhan to Europe and then to New York. And then there's another mutant identified that's very, very effective of kids. And uh, and, and Dr. Fauci just discussed that a couple months ago. So we know at least three are here, probably more. And so those mutants are going to cause other pandemics. And the vaccine that we make is only going to be good for that vaccine, for that mutant that, that, that they have there, for the, for the type that they have. Exactly. So it, it's, it's, uh, it, it behooves me that this vaccine, and then the third, a, a third thing, Dr. Thomas, I don't think first we're going to get a vaccine. But mm. second, if we do get a vaccine, with the live virus, and we're only given a three months uh, 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 coverage, and our antibodies are only uh, rising to a titer that that protects us for about three months from the live virus. The vaccine is a artificial antigen, right? And so it's going to invoke a response. But how will our response be better than three months? <laughs> The live virus right. is only three months. The right. artificial vaccine, we're, it can't be better than the live virus. So we may have to get three to four injections of, of this of this vaccine per year, mm -hmm. which is not, it, it's just not compliant. Yeah. It, it's just not going to be compliant if you have to have three or four uh, 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 shots uh, a year for, for, for a vaccine. I don't think that's going to be compliant. There's so many things that, that points us to the fact that even if we do get a, a, a vaccine next year, well, I'm saying, you know, end of next summer, uh, fall, if we do get a vaccine, there's so many things against it that um, uh, I, I see, I, I'm going to be, it, we're going to struggle for, for it having the kind of impact that we had hoped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's enormous. Let's see, uh, Bruce Wells is saying, that uh, have Dr. Have Dr. Brown come back on the show and tell us which vi which vaccine to take. <laughs> well, you, you well, well, we got vaccines, you know, that are targeted at the spike protein, and and the the virus can change the spike protein. So they, I don't think they're going to be effective. We got new vaccines that have never been tried using mRNA, and and those those are you know. We, they've never been tried to be effective. So Moderna using, using that technology, we don't even know if that's going to even have an impact at all. Right. And so, you know, there, there are multiple, multiple types of, of, of vaccines that we have um, trying to make. Uh, but let me be clear that we're, 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 uh, we're, we're not, we're not there where, where we want to be in vaccine development. Look, SARS came in 2003. We never got a vaccine for that. That was the first coronavirus. Yeah, that's it's true. 17 years later. HIV, 40 years ago, we never got a vaccine for that. We never got a vaccine, but I'm saying another coronavirus. Right, that's true. Right, right. We, we, we never, we don't have a vaccine for, for, for SARS or MERS. True, true. So we, we're, we want to have hope. But we got hope because we got some blockbuster stuff that have come, some big game changer stuff that have come, but it's not in the vaccine right now. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. Uh, what makes the United States special, right? 
because Germany, South Korea, Australia, you saw uh, China, they're having enormous pool parties. I have a, I have a, uh, a cousin who's over there in large groups, you know, just like normal, just like normal. So what makes United States so different from these countries that seem like they've gotten over the hump? Because we had no national policy in the beginning. And all those countries had a national policy where they in, invoked a uh, shutdown and people were not moving, not for a couple weeks, but, but for a, 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 a full six weeks, six to eight, 10 weeks, they were under, uh, under, under uh, a, a very strict uh, guidelines and, and, and the people were compliant. And, and, and our people, sorry to say, are not compliant. So because we didn't sacrifice in the beginning, now this thing got out of control and it's hard to get the all the all the beans back in the bag once they spilled you spilled the beans. And so now these countries are benefiting from the fact that they did an early stepwise national uh, uh, plan and policy that was 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 invoked and the people were compliant and followed it. And so uh, they gave also gave, you know, you didn't say this, Dr. Thomas, they also gave people uh, money too. They just put it in their accounts. You didn't have to apply for it. They just put the money in their accounts mm. so they could take care of themselves, right? They, they had a plan, mm. right? They, they gave out PPE, right? Did we send out any PPE? The, the, the president's office, stopped them from shipping the PPE to the people. I mean, like that we have no national plan and then we have a leadership that seems like they're against providing help to the people to get to get better. Mm -hmm. Then you got a large proportion of people who don't even believe the virus exists. I mean, thinking it's a, it's a hoax. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, 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 our attitude in the way uh, the United States uh, dealt with this virus in the early beginning has paved the way to where we are now. And uh, sadly, we're not going to be able to, to put to, to put the, the everything back into the container because it's gotten out. Now we have to go through four. Hey, look, by December, 400,000 people will, will die. I mean, are you kidding me? 400,000. So you know we we we're we're we're, gonna, we're we have a different uh, trajectory because of the way we dealt with this virus and the way we've we have states who have based on their political uh, uh, associations have just said open up let people get sick well five percent of those states people are going to die five percent of their population are going to die is this a is this a uh, uh, are they calling the herd? Are they intentionally doing this to, 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 to bring the population down? I mean, what is going on? I mean, this is this is unreal. What 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 uh, what what uh, what's going on? It's unreal. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a very good question by our good friend uh, Joe Dent. He says. Um, if Biden is if, if Biden were to get in office and we had change of leadership, what is the possibility that he could, through the right measures, through the appropriate protocols, get it under control, quote unquote? Well, uh, first, I want to say hello to Uncle Joe and uh, I love you. Hope you stand safe. You and Aunt Judy stay safe and uh and hope, hope once this virus, uh, we get this under control, I get, we get to see you guys and, 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 and fellowship again. But yeah, Joe Biden, uh, if he wins, uh, will be faced with Republican governors then becoming blockades to a national policy. See, you can only invoke the policy if the states invoke the policy. True. So unless you have control of the state, then the state will do its own thing. And that's the problem, is that if there's a way to overcome that and invoke a national policy that requires people to adhere to certain rules for a certain amount of time that would quench and, and, and smash this virus down, I think we have a chance. 
But really, really, Dr. Thomas, I don't think we're going to have a chance because I think the political nature of the states that are will be against him uh, will keep those states and, and they they will forever uh, or all during his his uh, his time they will be uh, a, the the melting pot or the source of the virus. You know, anytime someone goes into those states, they can get the virus and bring it back to the other states. And so those are going to be a reservoir. Those states are going to be a reservoir for the virus. Mm -hmm. And uh, sadly enough, um, when the other types of of, of COVID mutants hit, we're going to just have multiple pandemics over the next 10 years is what, what I'm predicting. Wow. Massive, a massive um, uh, contradictory or challenge, I should say, to social contract and democracy, really, uh, because in those countries where they don't have democracies, uh, yeah. those are the countries that locked it down. Those are the countries that don't have it right now in, in large part. So, uh, so there is something to be said. And if there's but, but listen to this, listen to this, Dr. Thomas, let, let me be clear about that. They may be partying and having big functions and doing well today. But it doesn't take much for that virus to begin to light a fire and a smoke, a uh, uh, light, light a match again. Mm -hmm. See, I, I want I want you to understand that they are not out of risk either. They just they're just benefiting from early national policy. And now when they come out and reopen their economies, I, that virus is coming back. Mm. It's going to come back in a rage and they'll have to start all over again. Mm. This is the point I'm making. Yeah. And, and that makes sense because if you've got international travel at all, you're still susceptible even from those coming from the United States and other places. Because even if you shut down folks coming in from the United States, Who's to say that they're not coming in from Europe or another place to that country? So they still are susceptible to your point. That makes good sense. Uh, yeah, let me let me say this. When I travel, I used to travel a lot to, to, to China, to Beijing, and you cut fly into Beijing airport and there's a you walk through the temperature scanner. It's a it's it's a scanner that everybody walks through and you can walk, you know, ten people at a time can walk through and they scan you very quickly. To, to see if you you have a, a fever. Well, that doesn't work for blocking people from coming in that are asymptomatic. Right. They have no fever. We, yeah. They're infected. Right. They have no fever. Right. So but 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 we now have a game changer and you know we'll get to that that will actually help in that regard to be able to identify the people who have no physical symptoms. I can see you're sick. I can see your, your skin is blushed. I can see you're dragging. I, I can pull you out of the group when your fever is up. But those who have no fever, no infection, which represents 40% of the cases, those people are the infectors. Right. And they, they can't be detected unless you, you have a test. Yeah. Yeah. So true. So, uh, uh, Patricia Pate says, uh, I trust you, Dr. Brown. Let us know when there's a vaccine that you can trust. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bruce Wells says that uh, he says that you are our uh, medical Moses and you must lead us to the vaccine promised land. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Wells, come on, Dean Wells. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So that's why I got Moses. I have Moses come on every month so we can know what's going on because we want to know the truth. Now, you've been talking about game changer, game changer, game changer. What are you talking about? A lot of times I'm so excited because we have now a game changer that will change the way that we deal with this virus. Mm. And, and that is, and here it is, we have the rapid testing that's come available. That means you can get your results back in 30 minutes. And in some cases, the Abbott test is 15 minutes, $5 in 15 minutes of getting your, your results back. Now we have them, they're not everywhere. We have them in Maryland and uh, we've used them, get the results back in 30 minutes. How can that be impactful? Because as we, we make this test like a, a available to everyone, 
where it'd be almost like a pregnancy test. You could buy kits and then you'd be able to screen. You'd be able to screen people on a Friday before they come to the church or you could screen them uh, Sabbath morning and before they go to the, the church to serve inside of the, before they come inside of the, the church, you could screen. You could screen before you go to a concert. Uh, just depending on, on the use, how we utilize it, we could screen for before kids go to class. So if you if you have no fever and no headache and you haven't reported that you are around per people who have been sick, I'm so you still get screened because you could be asymptomatic. And we're gonna pick up pa patients or kids who are sick but don't have the, the symptoms. That's how we're gonna protect ourselves. And so then you can open up schools because they'll be able to take the test. Right now, the tests are being developed and they're, they're being taken. You can go to different places. In Maryland, we have several that are 30 minute tests, 15 minute tests, you get your data back. Uh, I know in some, some, some states, CVS is offering this 30 minute test. Um, now they, they have some problems. Right now, we, they're, they're being worked out. Um, our group at, at George Mason, my, one of my colleagues, they are doing a thousand of them a day and they're testing and they're getting rapid tests for a thousand, thousand uh, college students a day. And, and so they're gonna learn how to make this test have less false, uh, less false negatives is what we, what we care about. False positives, I don't care about that. That means you came in, I told you you were positive so then now you get quarantined. Now you have to be six feet away until you get a PCR test. Well, that's that's not too bad. You just got quarantined for a few days. Right. But if you come in as a false negative and I say you come in and I say, oh, you're negative. And then you begin to live your life with no mask around your family. You begin to do things that because you felt you were negative, but you actually were positive. That, that's, that's, the that's, that's the problem. Yeah. So the false the negative problem. is the one we worry about. And so these, these, these tests will become available to, to being able to purchase over on, you know, over the counter. They're not there yet. They're still in the development stage, but they're free and you can get a 30 minute test. Yeah. Um, you can get a 24 hour test, but the 30 minute and the 15 minute test, that's a game changer. That's a, that's going to make it where we can then change our behavior and utilize these tests to def to find who is asymptomatic, who doesn't have symptoms, but they have virus. And that's the group that once we can identify them, we, we're, we're going to be able to open things back up. Hmm. Uh, Vicki uh, Toilette says that she's heard of false negative results uh, for that. How long do you think it would take to tweak the test but you that's not what you're reporting and hearing you're hearing you're hearing um uh that uh they're false no you're hearing no, I'm, false I'm negatives. hearing false negatives we have false negatives uh -huh. and that's a problem yeah but we but right now even with the false negatives having this test is a game changer right because it's we're gonna get better we're right. gonna be able to to, 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 to narrow down the false negatives into a way that will be very insignificant. Right, right now, the PCR is the most accurate, you know, it's in the 99% accuracy. We're going to get these other tests to be more accurate and, and, and many false negative, and the false negative number will drop, just like with the pregnancy test. They're using this rapid ELISA type of test format. Right. We'll start off with, with uh, you know, some in, inaccuracies but that doesn't matter. We're going to get it to a point where it's going to be uh, very accurate and you'll be able to buy it over the counter by, you know, a church could buy a thousand, you know, and, and, and screen a hundred a week or whatever that are going to come to church and then be able to, to tell, you know, 10 or 15 or five people that got positive that, you know, come back in 14 days and, and attend. But right mm -hmm. now you're positive and we can't, you know, allow you into the building. Yeah. And so that, that that's going to be impactful. So think about think about choir rehearsal now. All right, bring bring uh, bring yourself, but also bring your tests, potlucks. Come on, that's bring right. your bring your macaroni and cheese. 
but bring your test. <laughs> that, that's one, that's test. one way to look at it, Dr. Yeah. Thomas. Another bring your way test. to look at it. And when you come to my to house, it, when you come to my house, bring your test. If you yeah, don't bring your a, test, I'm going to have a test for you. Yeah, well, here's another one. When you come, just come 15 minutes earlier. That's what I'm saying. That made people get there on time because they don't be on time. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. We know we know how people do that's about right. time. That's so, right. So that's okay. It'd right. be right. standing there waiting on them results to that's come right. back. That's, that's okay. right. That's all right. But if you come to my house, you just wait in the car for 15 minutes, though. That's if you come right. to my house, exactly, and, and then come on to and the And that's door. a behavior. What I'm saying, that's a behavior change that's going to happen, mm -hmm. and that's that's how this this test. It's going to impact us because we're, we're going to learn how to utilize it best practices in our house, in our, in our work, in our church, in our, and even going to restaurants. I mean, it, it's the same thing. I'm not, I'm not going inside a restaurant right now. I eat some of the, some of the best food, but it's, it, I take, I get it to order. Yeah. And, and some, I'm not eating inside closed spaces at the moment. And no one else should be either until we get a control of this virus. But nonetheless, this rapid test is a game changer, Dr. Tom. It's a game changer. I'm thankful God. God always provides a way. Yeah, because you know, last time you was on, last time you were on in August, you said that the class of 86 we could not have an in-person reunion. So we're going to rapid test our way to, a, to an in-person reunion. How about that? That's right. There you go. There you go. There you go. You got it. You got it. I mean, I'm excited because, you know, I, don't, I knew God wasn't going to. Look, when, when, when he said he got had enough of the world, he said, look, I'm going to have to destroy this world. But, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to destroy this entire world. But I'm going to give you an ark. All you have to do is get inside the ark. You're going to be safe. Get in. That's right. He always provide a way. He, he told it. He told the, the Israelites and the Egyptians, you know, I'm going to kill the firstborn of every young, uh, firstborn male of everyone in this in, in here. It, it, I, I got to do it. Uh, but if you put the lamb's blood up there and stay inside, you, you. you're going to be safe. God yeah. always provide a yes. way yes. to be safe. He's yes. saying to us, stay away from this virus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Christians as well as non-Christians are dying from it. Yeah. Parishioners as well as pastors and, 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 and church leaders are dying from it. Um, more than 200 Seventh-day Adventists have died from it in New York alone. And so he's saying, you know, this, this, this virus has permission to get, to get the church of God as well. So stay <laughs> away from it. I gave you permission, stay away from it. As long as you stay away from it, you're gonna be safe. Mm -hmm. And so now we have this, 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 the, the, the rapid test that allow us to see who has the virus but don't have symptoms. And now we can, we're gonna be safe. We're gonna be safe. We're gonna get through it. Yeah. Good. 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 So uh, you mentioned that they are at CVS, and I, I've seen them at CVS as well. I haven't seen them, but I've seen it online. And also, uh, I think Walgreens uh, here in California had them too. So, uh, so there's the Abbott uh, Benex Now Rapid Test that we were just talking about, $5, 15 minutes result. Then I also read about a, a Senegalese Rapid Test, $1 and 30 minutes. Had you heard about okay, that at that's all? Good. Yeah, you... that's good. Okay. That's good. Those numbers are going to change. We're going to get... We're going to get 10, 12, you know, you know, our, our economy always is one of competition. So, sure. you know, they might get it down to 50 cent. Who knows? But the point is, is that we have this test. It's going to be available right now. It's available for you to take it at different places. Uh, it's free, but uh, eventually it'll be offered for sale and you'll be able to take it home, take it at work, take right. it at school. And I'm excited. Excited. And yeah. I thank God for providing this provision for us to be safe. Amen. I should also add that the uh, state of Georgia Department of Health just purchased 207,000 of them. Uh, Orange County, California has, uh, has purchased a number of them and they have them in their possession. And uh, the federal government is supposed to be purchasing 150 million. We'll see how that works out uh, because we know we can't always go by what they say, right? So yeah, and, it is and, and I know people who have taken it. So 
you know, like you said, I did, I, you know, I, I've been fishing. I went fishing and I, I took a friend, a friend of my son's roommate and he, and, uh, from college and, and he took, went and took uh, that Sunday morning, went and took the 30 minute test, got his results back in 30 minutes. So we have it in Maryland. Um, I know it's in the Northeast corridor at CVS's or first care, first prompt care places. Some of them have it. Mm-hmm. Um, right now they're just learning how to utilize it and, to, and to, to, to work out the kinks. So it's free and you can take it and get your results back. Mm-hmm. I mean, what good is a test if you take it and you don't get it back for seven to 10 days? You might as well just quarantine the whole time, right? I mean, <laughs> It doesn't matter. So mm-hmm. the quick test allows for real time uh, assessment of people and real time assessment of the asymptomatic. Those are the only people I care about because other people, when I hit you with a temperature check and your temperature is 100.4, I know to send you home or to, 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 to quarantine your way. But the people who don't have a fever but are still spewing the virus, this test will catch them and we'll be able to be safe. And that's a, that's a blessing. And uh, I want the people of God, I want the, the grassroots, I want our uh, black and brown people to know we're going to have to learn how to integrate this testing into our life. Hmm. Got to be a regular part of our life, like brushing our teeth, like picking up our keys, like getting a cup of coffee or whatever else it is that we do. It's got to be a regular part of our lives. And I know people are going to complain about the $5 or one. I mean, look, that's a happy meal. Come on. I mean, just give up a happy meal. That's a, that's, that's a cup of coffee at Starbucks, right? Hey, look, a, who invented a $5 cup of coffee? I mean, re, give me a break. Yeah. But nonetheless, they'll get it down to a reasonable number. And we're just going to have to make a budget uh, to be able to, to utilize this test uh, so that we can be safe. How much does a pregnancy test cost these days? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I've been, I stayed been away from that. It's a while since you had to use know. one? Hey, look, I, <laughs> we stayed away from that. <laughs> <laughs> My oldest is 18. <laughs> I said, My oldest is 18. <laughs> I'm expecting for you to keep up with the, with the um, cost. I'm expecting you to keep up with the cost. Another question... Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. You no, but I said the point is, is that the way we utilize the pregnancy test uh, will be uh, we will utilize COVID-19 and other uh, mutants of COVID-19 over, you know, the next forever. Right. Uh, we will be utilizing them uh, on a daily basis. And and uh, and that's going to be and especially for events, especially for schools, uh, colleges, uh, churches. Uh, restaurants, everything. This is a game changer because I was listening to Dave Chappelle and D.L. Hewley. So Dave Chappelle has actually been having events out at this big ranch or whatever. It's outdoor. I think, you know, he's got a place. And uh, everybody would be tested. And once they get tested, they're in this kind of like a bubble. And uh, they weren't allowed to go in and out. And this was this was the the comedians and the musicians and everyone on the set, and they they were able to do that. So now that was with the tests that were you know two three days. But imagine now this is as you said really a game changer because yeah. we will get back to a sense of normalcy because we're not having to wait two and three and four and five days like before. So this is this is huge. Uh, one other question on this before we take any questions that the uh, listeners may have is uh, now now the the rapid test that we just we've been talking about is an antigen test and that's blood and what is the difference between the antigen test and the saliva and nasal test what is the difference so so, so let me let me just say this that the rapid test I'm talking about is not blood Okay. These are these are right now nasal tests only. Okay. Nasal tests only, not blood. These are thirty-minute tests. These are fifteen-minute tests. Okay. Now we are developing saliva-based tests because if you've ever had, like, there's a lot of people who've never even been tested, so they don't know the struggle when they put when you have to put that 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 uh, swab up your nose till you you start coughing and start start sneezing. 
you know, I, I get tested a lot. And so when you stick that, that swab up your nose, that's, that's, a, that's a little bit a problematic for kids. That's, that's problematic for a daily type of, 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 of uh, unco being uncomfortable. So the saliva test will really break it open because you can just spit in a vial and then uh, be able to, uh, to get your test without having an invasive, intrusive, uh, uh, long swab stuck, stuck up close to your brain. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the point is, is, is that we're de it's developing. And I'm telling you, forecasting where it's going to go. We're going to be utilizing that saliva test. Hopefully, it will be the one that eventually will be the rollout where you will be just utilize it and uh, you know it's not painful and it's not you know a problem and 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 it'll be accurate and, yeah. and it'll take time yeah. but right now it's the so it's the nasal test that I'm talking about that are being used now uh, for the rapid test. Okay. Yeah, I've had the um, the throat test and the nasal both were you know pretty painful, uh, but you yeah. know you got to do what you got to do. Well, appreciate that explanation. Any other uh, any other questions from our audience uh, that you have before we get uh, our medical Moses off <laughs> <laughs> off today? He's been very helpful. Uh, any other questions that we may have missed? I think some of the questions that uh, you mentioned we he actually covered them, and so I didn't uh, I didn't bring them up. Any other questions we might have before we uh, release him and let him let him go. He's got to go out and take a take a test, take a rapid test <laughs> before he goes back home. And please, uh, please give mom and dad uh, my regards as well. And, I sure uh, will. I yeah. sure I'm down here with them now. My, I'm really uh, excited to be down here with my parents. Yes. Oh, uh, let's see. This is not a question, but business owners. Oh, they were saying that if a business has to buy those five dollar tests that can test that can add up, you know, uh, pretty quickly over time. So, uh, you know, it, it will be yeah. The business business is gonna learn how to pass that that on. That's gonna be a tax. Business expense. Uh, it's gonna, it's, it's, I mean, look, be a whatever expense. that number is, yeah. it's gonna be required. Yeah. And it's gonna be required to keep you safe. And you you're gonna do it in order to stay open. And right. so we'll figure it out. We'll figure out the cost. We'll figure out how who pays and and what pays but nonetheless uh right now it's 5 bucks and uh, hopefully it will you know go down to $1 but who knows um, what how that what the markets will 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 require excellent excellent all right i think we've answered all of the questions and you'll be sure to be back with us we have you coming back with us uh next month and you'll be with us uh, before Thanksgiving. You'll be with us in December. We've got those dates all lined up as things continue to develop. And hopefully uh, G4 won't uh, spread uh, anymore. Hopefully it won't get any wings here. But we'll keep monitoring that as well. And uh, Dr. Brown, we really respect you and respect your, uh, your expertise and your knowledge. The anointing, the particular anointing that God has given you for such a time as this to uh, share important information and don't nobody don't nobody own you that's the best part of it uh, right that's the best uh -huh. part of it you can speak the truth and tell us what's going on what's really going on uh one question just came in what do you think the virus will look like by summer 2021 uh that's from my sister Shira. she's trying to go swimming <laughs> <laughs> yeah well if we if we if it doesn't impact if the herd immunity doesn't impact it, if we don't have a, vi a, a vaccine and we don't have a, a, a therapy, one of those three things have to happen for a big impact. That means returning more like to what we were normal, what we're, we're, we're like before pre-COVID. But if none of those three things happen, we still got the rapid test and we still can detect people who have the virus. So, it, uh, I will tell you, it, it won't change much until we get those three things, but this, this is a game changer. It allows us to be, operate safely. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and Robin uh, Parker Langley is asking, where can we get these uh, rapid tests? 
Yeah, so there, there are some. I know CVS has the rapid test that you can go take. You swab yourself. They, you put the thing in the in the little container, and they give you the data back in 30 minutes. Um, there's some fast uh, first prompt care places. And I'm just talking about Maryland because that's where I operate here. But there, I know that they're up and down the East Coast. You just have to find out in your region where the rapid 30 minute test is being performed. And then you can you can uh, you can go there and, and and get it done, and then and 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 it's nice to to learn how it's happening. So just taking it just to learn how the thirty minute test operates is going to be great. And and I'm expecting that the Abbott fifteen minute test, you know, that cuts down half the time. There'll probably be a ten minute test. But but the point is is that we now thirty minutes is doable. You know, thirty minutes you could show up thirty minutes before an event get your test, and then you'll be able to go into the event. Mm -hmm. But 15 minutes will be better. And then right now it's the nasal test, but we, we want the saliva test. We want it to improve to the saliva test so it's non-invasive. So it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks again, my brother. So good uh, talking with you. And thank you for dropping all that knowledge on us. And we'll look forward to chatting with you uh, next month. Good to talk to you. Uh, Great right. to see you. Likewise. And uh, God bless you. And your and because of your your uh, desire to inform the people of God, the grassroots people who who need to know the information. Thank you for what you do, Dr. Amen. Thomas. Thank Amen. you a lot. Amen. And thank you for what you do. All right. Blessings on you. All right. So uh, we appreciate um, we appreciate uh, our guest uh, speaker today. He's always bringing it. And uh, he's always telling it like it is. So we appreciate uh, that so very much. Just wanted to uh, let us know that uh, next, next week we're going to uh, have uh, Dr. Uh, Ken Marino, psychologist, author, professor. She'll be with us. She's going to be talking about healing family trauma. Dr. Uh, Ken Marino, Healing Family Trauma. So you don't want to, uh, you don't want to miss that at all. That's going to be a treat. You don't want to miss that Healing Family Trauma. And so um, I just want to end with um, our, uh, kind of our final thoughts for today. As I reflected on our conversation today, and what we were talking about, I thought about vaccine, vaccine. So vaccine is a substance used to stimulate the production of antibodies and provide immunity against dis-ease. Vaccination or vaccine is a substance used to stimulate the production of antibodies and provide immunity against dis-ease. So as I thought about this from a spiritual perspective and a biblical perspective, I thought that we need, we need vaccination. We need vaccination. And so we need vaccination and inoculation of the mind, of the mind. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 says, as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. And so what I'm suggesting to us is we need our minds inoculated, right? so that we would be protected against this virus, right? Because all things start in the mind, right? That what we think about determines our outcomes. How do we know that? Second Chronicles chapter 10, verse 5 says, casting down imaginations and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing it every thought into captivity to Jesus Christ. Right? So there's some thoughts, there's some imaginations, there's some ways that we even think about this disease uh, that, that cause us to be more susceptible at a mental or a cognitive level. Right? So we need mind or mental vaccination inoculation. Then we need bodily or physical vaccination inoculation. The, body, the Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 through 20, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, the dwelling place of God. So we got to treat it like it. So in order to have bodily or physical vaccination or inoculation, what do we need? We need fresh air. We need plenty of water. We need plenty of sleep. And, and we might think that odd, that's free, but a lot of us don't get it. Nutritious food, cutting down on processed foods, 
salt, sugar, preservatives. We need supplements. We come from the ground. We need that stuff in us because our food doesn't have it much anymore. We need to be out in nature. We need to do deep breathing, meditation, avoid toxicities, and more alkalinity. These things will build our immunity. Conventional medicine doesn't tell us that. They haven't been trained that way, but it does build immunity. Therefore, we need mind vaccination, body vaccination. We need spiritual vaccination. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand the dis ease that the devil brings. For we're wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers of wickedness in high places. This is not just physical. This is not just science. There is also something spiritual at play here, right? And I'm not suggesting that we ignore the science. I'm not suggesting that at all. But understand that there is more than meets the eye. So we have to be inoculated spiritually. We talked last week about having the vision so that we can see in the invisible, in the spiritual, spiritual vision. We talked about that with Dr. Jimmy Harris. And so the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, therefore be vaccinated with the whole armor of God that you may be able to resist dis-ease, right? Anything that causes you not to have ease, this is what the whole armor of God will inoculate you and vaccinate you from all of the various dis-eases. It says, gird your lions in verse 14, truth, breastplate of righteousness, the gospel of peace, faith to resist the dis-ease and darts and extinguish the maladies, then you need to get salvation, the spirit, and prayer, and petition, and praying at all times in the spirit. So uh, we're going to fight this thing. We got to do all the stuff that the scientist says, but we got to make sure we guard our minds and our hearts through Christ Jesus. We got to be careful to take care of our bodies, our temples, And then we have to make sure that our spirits, our spirits are hearing uh, from the Spirit of God. Because there are some places we don't need to go. And the Spirit will tell you. There don't need to be any sign that says this place is is, uh, uh, contaminated. There need to be that. But the Spirit of God wants us to know. And the Spirit of God will talk to us about the dangers and the possibilities for dangers. All right? So think about that in terms of vaccine, vaccination, Uh, making sure that our minds and our bodies and our spirits, right, provide the immunity against dis-ease. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus for this opportunity we've had to just chat, just chat a minute about these things that are so important, about these things that are that are uh, concerning to our country, God. And we we talked about the, the, the millions globally, uh, we talked about the uh, twenty, uh, the the two hundred four fourteen thousand here in this country deaths, and it is critical. And so we pray, God, that you would inoculate us, that you would give us a vaccine, like you've done for uh, Elder Philip and Sister Kenya at their daycare. God, you have kept them. Uh, we ask that you would that you would see the blood that we've applied to our doorposts the blood that we've applied to our cars and to our businesses and and to all things that our bodies and all things that pertain to us, our bank accounts, all things that pertain to us. We ask that you would recognize the blood, oh God, and pass over and pass over. Help us to use wisdom, good judgment, and to uh, appreciate and appropriate the science. We thank you. Now we ask your blessing to be, we prayed for the eyes last week in particular, the physical eyes, the spiritual eyes. Now, God, I'm praying for the bodies of your people on this call and those who will listen and hear. And I pray that you will inoculate them physically in the name of Jesus so that they would be kept from every attack of this virus on their bodies. Keep them, O God. And then there are those who are sick and afflicted, and we're asking for miraculous healings. We remember our dear brother and uh, fellow alumni, 
of Oakwood University, Daryl Alexander, and wrestling with cancer. And we pray for him and lift him up, God, and ask for a profound turnaround in his life. And we'll be careful, God, to give you praise, honor, and glory for having done these great things. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. Thank you for this opportunity. And, and we pray for the information that shall go forth tonight as, uh, as five of the uh, prior um, uh, chairpersons or presidents of uh, the CDC come together to talk about what's going on with this virus, the fears that are going on, and what we must do in the future. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.